Hello and welcome to the core report. The Karnataka government recently said that it would reserve jobs for people both in the white collar segment as well as the blue collar segment and the numbers were quite substantial. Though what the numbers are and the composition of that announcement is not so important right now because that decision has been now put on hold because of considerable and swift big backlash from industry. But this also raises some larger questions. So one is that uh, why is the government at this stage, Karnataka in this case, but it's being attempted by, uh, being attempted by other state governments as well, trying to impose quotas for jobs, at least in the private sector at this point of time, and what could be the trigger? Secondly, if we are to address the fundamental concept of joblessness or aspirations for better jobs, then what are the solutions and how could we do it? And also, how should politicians then be responding to the signals that they're clearly getting from the electorate, which is that there is joblessness in the economy at large? I put this question to Captain G.R. Gopinath, well known at, uh, for his uh, entrepreneurial ability and entrepreneurial stints, including Air Deccan and now Deccan helicopters. Uh, Captain Gopinath is based out of Bangalore, but is also a frequent commentator uh, on issues uh, in the political economy space. Captain, thank you so much for joining me. So I'm picking up on the controversy triggered by this new reservation bill for private sector jobs in the state of Karnataka. Now that bill has been placed on hold, so everyone is breathing a sigh of relief. The background to this obviously is that it was a surprise and a shock to industry, not just in Karnataka, but outside as well, because there are so many uh, businesses uh, who are investing from outside Karnataka and outside India as well. So these uh, obviously send the wrong signal. So the concept here is basically, should there be reservations? If so, of what kind? And then why are the politicians doing it? And could there be some other solution? So I'll come to these two points in the next 10 minutes. First is, uh, is our reservations bad in principle? Or should there be some calibration? They're not bad in principle. There, there should be some reservations. But it should be calibrated, as you rightly said. Somewhere between maybe the subjective opinion I'm giving, but I'm sure most people will agree. Uh, it should be somewhere between 30 to 40 percent. And, and it should be done with wide consultations. I think that is the key. With dialogue, debate, um, not only in the legislature, uh, along with the opposition, they should talk to the opposition and other parties, but also with the, the economists. Uh, with non-partisan economists, especially of neither the left nor the right, of industry, industry bodies, and also the uh, labor. Consult everybody because uh, uh, just, you know, uh, thrusting it down the, the throat, uh, you know, somebody at, at his whim or his uh, idiosyncrasy or ego, um, it's misguided politics. It's exactly on the lines of what BJP did with the hijab controversy, it did with uh, uh, where it you know, changed the rules, uh, uh, rules of school uniforms. Um, it did the same thing regarding uh, Tipu Sultan controversy, textbooks. You know, overnight they changed the textbooks. You know, this is knee jerk. Uh, uh, there was religious communal uh, chauvinism. This is uh, uh, regional uh, Kannadiga jingoism, both uh, misguided and misplaced. And I think it will do more harm to Karnatikas uh, because only if the industry survives, if there is industry, they can give any reservations. If industry collapses and if the revenue of Bangalore, which provides 70% uh, uh, crashes, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be, uh, Mr. Sidramaya will be held, uh, uh, ho ho he'll be holding the can. So he must um, act uh, prudently. I think it was very imprudent to, uh, you know, to announce it from out of the blue. And it smacks of the same kind of uh, misguided uh, right. religious jingoism as uh, what Congress is doing now. Right. Okay. So, uh, let me come back to the, the calibrated reservation. So, we are obviously saying now blue collar jobs up to a certain point. Now, is this something that industry would do either ways? I mean, I mean, in your understanding, being in Bangalore or Karnataka? Yeah, I think all of us, you know, we know when Air Deccan was running and even now the, the, the Deccan Helicopters, which is a small boutique company, which I am involved, 
we had uh, bases all over India and we always took local people because we wanted the local uh, uh, people join uh, just out of a community sense of uh, uh, loyalty to that place. And also they are from the local areas, you know, it's a good thing to do that. And we all do that. Even in, in, my, in Bangalore, for example, our uh, uh, housekeeping staff, the, all those people are local. But there are some jobs the Kanadigas are reluctant, just like in, in America, the locals are reluctant to do certain jobs, uh, which is good because then it uh, allows free movement of, see, the free movement of goods and labor is the bedrock of any vibrant economy because labor moves where there's demand. That will uh, obviously increase uh, fair wages for the local people and they move up the value chain. So in our own company, they, for example, the security guards, uh, not just in companies, the security guards in apartments, security guards throughout Bangalore, they're all uh, either Gurkhas from Nepal, not even within India. I'm not talking of foreigners. This is move, restricting movements of people within India, which is absolutely regressive and uh, and divisive. Um, you know, it, it, and also large, vibrant um, economies have a melting pot of migrants, which is the parameter of a good economy. And it also integrates uh, people. So... There are some people, uh, Kanadigas, do not want to, for example, they don't want to go to Bihar. Uh, um, but Biharis come to, uh, not only in Bangalore, they are there even in Bangalore, not only in five-star companies or technology giants. They are also in Udupi hotels these days. They are all in agriculture labor, and which is good. And uh, the Kanadigas Kanad are also very entrepreneurial. I'm not just talking of Narayan Murthy. That is a deeply entrepreneurial uh, state. You can look at it in looking at all the Udupi hotels, looking at all the bars and restaurants, and the multifarious uh, shops of every kind uh, across the state, not just in Bangalore. Right. I think, uh, I mean, a recent article that you wrote, you made the point, which is well taken, that organized sector jobs are, of course, quite few and they're barely 10% uh, of the economy. And the balance is really the unorganized sector, which is all these. Not even 10%. Uh, not even 10%. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the total number of people employed in the uh, public sector, including railways and the uh, police and um, the, uh, the sort of both state and central government put together and the corporate jobs. Is about 55, 60 million in a population of 1.5, billion. They are just about six uh, percent. Right. The rest are uh, 400 are agriculture and uh, agriculture labor, and another 400 are uh, in small and tiny businesses. And the government will do well to focus on uh, education, healthcare, which are interlinked, like, like Amartya Sen said, because. They go hand in hand and uh, ensure that they give skill development and most of most of all reduce damn corruption because Karnataka has been racked by corruption. The previous government there was a charge of forty percent. The present government there is a charge of forty uh, percent. Investigations are going on, so everybody knows that uh, you know corruption is is eating into the vitals of uh, India and also in Karnataka especially. I just gave an example that, for example, to start a UDP hotel, uh, the the government fees are well well thought out. It is three thousand rupees. Now it used to be one thousand rupees to get a municipality license. So the yeah. government gets one thousand, three thousand rupees, but the bribe is uh, thirty thousand to one lakh rupees, and uh, yeah, even and for a liquor shop. Yeah, and and you've written that shop, as well. Uh, let me let me pick up uh, two points, Captain. So one is that, uh, you know, let's say Karnataka or Bangalore specifically, thanks to IT and so on, has seen a roughly two, two and a half decade of continuous prosperity or at least linear prosperity. Yeah. The second is that, uh, you know, blue collar versus white collar jobs. The aspirations of a white collar jobs and even within blue collar jobs, people are, the locals are getting edged out because as you said, people are coming from Bihar uh, or UP or, Karnat or neighboring states like Andhra. Maharashtra and so on. So it doesn't matter where they come from, but they're coming from outside. Now, there, there are two things that emerge from this. One is that uh, people are aspiring for something higher, but they're not getting it for sure. 
Second is that even in blue collar jobs, they're getting edged out because the person, the immigrant who's coming from outside is more hungry, maybe willing to work for less, does not have a family to go back to, can work night shifts and so on. So in both ways, uh, they're getting edged out. And, and, uh, and the white collar for rightful reasons, I mean, you obviously, like for example, tomorrow, you cannot hire a pilot uh, on, uh, let's say, in some form of reservation. I mean, it has to be someone who meets the meritorious uh, requirements of that job. So how does one then uh, then uh, manage this demand supply? No, I think uh, uh, I do not agree with the analysis. Firstly, in the in the um, blue collar jobs, there are many jobs which are filled by the locals. Obviously, when the locals uh, do not want to go for a, uh, as, as I said, they don't prefer to be a security guard, right? But the Assamese are ready to be security security guards. And many of them do not like to work as cooks in apartments. Right? Uh, and uh, there's a huge demand for cooks and security guards and all these beauty parlors in there. So the local population is not keen on getting into, you know, spas and giving massages or beauty parlors. They are filled by the Northeast, largely. And uh, so, so different sections parts of India fulfill that need and they, it fits well. And 30-40% is, I think even otherwise about 20-25% in companies like Infosys, they take locals. You only take we have got a lot of locals. But obviously in the management and top management jobs, for example, in the accounting sector, it's largely Tamilians who are there, right? Just like in the journalism, it's largely Ker Keralites and Bengalis, right? He's crawling with them. So now if you force and say you take locals, that, that may not be the right way of doing things. And uh, and so that's a low card. As far as the white collar jobs are concerned, the huge number of uh, people from not only just Bangalore, every district headquarters has got multiple engineering colleges. Hassan, for example, has got um, you know, three engineering colleges, right? So uh, there was only one long ago. Now there are three engineering colleges, two medical colleges, two dental colleges. So now all these people, even today Infosys said they are going to hire about 25,000 people. TCS has about, you know, 50,000 people a quarter. So now where are they going to get it from? This, is, this was done by ICICI Kamat long ago, where he started recruiting people from regional towns. And the regional town uh, people like Hassan, Tumkur, Kolapur or whatever, they are much, much more focused because they're less distracted, more hungry because they come from rural background. They're very aspirational now. In from every village, you will have someone who's working in IBM or Accenture. In my own farm, my, 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 my at least in the, in the village, my neighbor, neighbor's children are all in Infosys and Accenture. And he resigned in Infosys and joined, um, you know, uh, Google. So this is already an aspirational economy, not only in India, all over India. More so in Bangalore and Karnataka and southern states like Tamil Nadu. So, so top level management jobs and the mid level management jobs must be totally on merit. It cannot be on, uh, as you said, for either for pilots or for any other job. And sufficient numbers are being fed by Karnataka because Karnataka has the largest number of engineering institutions, technological institutes from Indian Institute of Science, Indian Institute of Information Technology, and MBAs. So there is a flood of them. And they're all getting good jobs. Right. And the problem is there is huge joblessness. Joblessness of both the, you know, educated people without skills. You no know, guy who has just done a BCom, for example. Or educated people uh, who is a PUC without any skills. It's impossible for them to get it. Or just a BSc. It's impossible for him to get a job. So they had to get skill development, you know, if, he's a, if he has to be an English teacher, because there is huge demand for English teachers. They had to get a, 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 you know, what they call the education degree, apart from the degree in literature. So the government must focus on good education, education and education, and continuous skill development and health care, and remove corruption so that more and more Thousands and thousands of small and medium enterprises, you know, rise to the top. Now, the sm small and medium enterprises are not the focus of either central government 
or even the state government, you know, the companies like Infosys, IBM, they are extraordinarily good for this economy because they produce 70% of Karnataka's economy. But the thing is, ultimately you need bakers, you need hoteliers, you need welders, you need mechanics. They are the people who are the backbone of the engine or the engine of the economy. And that engine is filled up in the shadow economy by the migrants. They are in every aspect of our lives, both in the rural areas and the center. So the government must do what it is supposed to do, good governance, which is lacking, and corruption, removing of corruption. That has to be done in a systemic, right. systemic manner. Okay. So I think so, if they focus on that, jobs will get created and remove all the hurdles in, in for startups. So let me take a slightly political angle on this, not political to sp specific to Karnataka, but in general. If we look at recent elections, and I'm, I'm sure this could have been applied in the past as well, but recent elections for sure, one of the signals that's clearly being transmitted by voters seems to be the, their concerns on jobs or joblessness. Yeah. Now, the politicians' response, as in the case of Karnataka, may be ill-conceived, uh, including the fact that they've not taken anyone into, uh, let's say, into confidence before doing this uh, and, and rolling it out efficiently if they have to. But the fact that they're responding to a problem, to, at least in, as I see, it seems to be quite accurate, as in they are responding to what they see as a problem. I mean, we can blame politicians for a lot of things, but usually they, they get the signals right. How they react is, of course, a different issue, and we've talked about that already. So if they're reacting to something that is happening on ground, which is that there is joblessness, there is aspiration, even so, even if people have jobs, they're not the kind of jobs they aspire to, then how, how does this, how does the, the, let's say, the polity and the economy move forward or what's really ahead? No, no, you're absolutely you're spot on. The Karnataka government was very, uh, the, uh, the Congress here especially, and fortunately Rahul Gandhi left it to the local leadership. And the local leadership, you know, sensed that there's a huge problem of corruption and there's a huge problem of joblessness, right? And there was also a problem of uh, lifting the drown trotter, right? So they gave some guarantees, like, for example, giving free bus ride to the women. And of course, the freebies, they competed with BJP. They gave 5 kgs, they said 10 kgs, and they gave 2,000 rupees for every person. Some of it is good, but subsidy is good up, up to your point. Ultimately, if you see it, whether in Delhi or in Bangalore, if, you, if a car stops in the light, people are not begging. Maybe hardly one, one beggar, there's a one beggar, but... Hundreds of them come to sell something. The people want to sell. So this country is deeply entrepreneurial across India. And so they had to create the ecosystem for jobs to be created. Not just top down, top across us, down the line and improve on tourism, for example, which is the largest employer in the unorganized sector. All the small scale industries. So if you now completely, um, um, you know, wreck the economy of Bangalore by saying I give it to the local people, then the industry will take flight. Already in lightning speed, not only the industry leaders condemned it, the neighboring states of Kerala, which used to be a communist country where there's no industry, now they are, and, and Hyderabad, they immediately put out a, a press statement saying that come to, come to uh, uh, our state, Hyderabad. Yeah. So, so immediately the government, you know, is, is seeing everything through your political prism. They thought it is good brownie points to score, but I think it was a, a ill-advised move, and they should have consulted and taken a measured decision. I'm not saying take what I'm saying. They should have had wide, wide discussions, and not push it through exactly like what BJP did. What are the criticism they made about BJP? They're still making on the demonetization or COVID lockdown or any of these things. They should have had wide consultations and have a measured measured uh, decision taken so that they can implement it. And they are not addressing corruption. Corruption is the key issue in Karnataka, I am sure, as it is in many other states. The corruption, if they if they fix corruption, if they give good governance and make it the ease of doing business, anybody even today will tell you the problem with India is, see, because when you have a higher index in the international various parameters, when it is praising India, everybody wants to, you know, circulate it. The BJP will circulate, you know, they said this. But when they condemn you, 
you do not want to say you say it is a imperial uh, conspiracy you know it is a foreign conspiracy or foreign hand and all so they should focus on governance they should focus on uh, so you that's know, a slightly education. Uh, captain that's a slightly uh, uh, medium to long term outlook and which is absolutely right including no, it's education also, it's and it's also skills. immediate you know there's no long term in education and healthcare they should do it immediately see even in my village for example my cook when she when she has a problem and he has a problem he doesn't go to a government hospital he goes to a private hospital today i'm talking from my personal experience when i go to my village i'm fully rooted there in the soil so i know it they do not go by driver he goes to a private hospital he says some government hospital be nahi jayega so i mean this is a serious problem across india so we have to focus on delivering good health care good education and make it the ease of doing business of course you punish corruption and other things but i'm saying ease of doing business making more not one narayan murti but thousands of narayan murtis and muzumdar shas must must rise from the soil not just in the it at all other kind of groups and services got it no so uh, let me come back to the jobs question which is immediate i mean i mean assuming that the politicians in whichever state or uh, even yeah. center to that extent are responding to a signal that they have been given as recently as in the general elections other state elections and of course they can see the numbers whether they believe whether they actually believe the numbers that are put out publicly or they have their own uh, numbers to look at i think there is general consensus that there is a problem on joblessness and job aspirations for jobs Absolutely. Yes. what should they be doing or could they be doing i mean if you were for example let's say uh, industries minister plus labor minister in the government of karnataka what would you do today as a politician rather than as let's say uh, economic commentator or as an or as an entrepreneur yeah i was i, I was into politics uh, yeah <laughs> i tested two elections stood for elections yeah of course i lost i lost uh, lost it badly uh, but anyway uh, what i would like to say is that see i think it's what is true yesterday true today and true tomorrow we need to create competition and not cartelization the problem in india is we favor industries either at the state level or at the central level we favor particular businesses policies are made to suit particular businesses for long we made policies for air india then we made policies for jet airways we don't make policies for the aviation sector similarly we have to make policies take the liquor for example i'll just give an example liquor provides huge employment not only at the point of manufacturing which bangalore is big but liquor also provides employment at the restaurants and bars uh, that are given now the bar license in fact one of the uh, people from the karnataka government has already made this official statement that when you issue a license today that license is with one either a, a mla's relative or a corporate's relative right who used or somebody who has used the political uh, so he has got that license for paying 1 lakh or 1 and a half lakh rupees 25 years ago they are not giving new licenses okay and when he what he does now is he sells his license so government gets zero and he sells his liquor license for what 2 crores 3 so for example i'm just giving you example very very serious problem as we are talking so the government gets no money when a liquor is transferred they, but he transfers the liquor but the guy pays 4 to 5 if it is mg road or brigade road he pays 4, 4 to 5 crores for getting the uh, liquor license from somebody else the second is when they issue a new license my cousin my cousin of mine started a bar you know a restaurant bar and there is a rule there that if you have some few rooms you can also have a bar with a restaurant now he told me himself that he paid 75 lakhs as the official fees to the uh, sorry 5 lakhs as the official fees to the government and paid 1 and 1/2 crores as bribe 1 and 1/2 crores as bribe and 5 5 5 uh, lakhs to the that goes officially to the government he said he got a concession because that fellow said normally i take recourse to you i am giving you 1 and 1/2 because you came as insurance and this is the case with you know, whether you want to get a license for a uh, RTO license, you want to get any kind of license. So if you make But the entry level easier, the, the argument, uh, Captain, there could be that maybe he should not have given the bribe. I mean, what would have happened? No, no, no. That's, I wrote an extensively about it in my book. 
uh, you know, I took me, it took me three years, for example, to get my uh, uh, aviation license. Three years of non-stop going to Delhi to get my first helicopter license. And all that I got at the end of three years was a three-line sentence saying the government has no objection for you to start a uh, uh, non-scheduled helicopter service. But it took me three years. Of course, uh, firstly, I didn't have the money. And secondly, I was fired in those days, even now a little bit. I was fired in those days with that zeal not to bribe. And I didn't have money to bribe. So I said, we keep going. There was no goal as to when I will stop. Like Vivekananda said, keep going till the birth. And finally, I got the license. But there are also good politicians and I did not bribe because the secretary said, uh, I went and rushed into the secretary's office. I said, what are you doing? You have made me come 10 times. When I come, you are not there in the office. He said, Captain, I already put the file on the, this is a true story. I said, I'll put the file on the minister's table. So then go and tell him, he said. No, I can't tell him. He'll mistake. I have got a motive with me. You go and meet him. So I went and met the minister. I, and I can also tell the name. Because one was a Congress minister, one was a BJP minister, another was a Janta Dalma. I did not pay anybody. I, I walked in. It was the Congress minister at that time. He gave, he said, Captain, is waiting to come. Where is my file? Where is my file? Then he pretended he, he doesn't know where the file is. When they say minister is waiting, that means waiting to see you to get something. He doesn't he says, hey, yes, he doesn't say no. So I went and he was good. He said, you should have come to me earlier and he signed it. Okay, and gave me a cup of coffee also. Same thing happened with the BJP for the airline. So I'm saying I did not pay at that time too. I was fortunate, but I was also persistent. If you go, like my father used to say, a fool and his money are soon parted. You go with a suitcase to Delhi, definitely some broker will take it. Keep some and give a little bit of it to the whosoever he's supposed to give. So I think we are also part to be blamed. But I think at the at least in the see there is huge corruption in, in, in the West in the, at the top level. You keep reading it all the time. But at least on the day-to-day -day functioning for small businesses, day-to-day -day is one. The government can do a lot uh, in focusing on that and governance and removing many many obstacles in uh, uh, making, because the small businesses, as I said in my article also, 80% of the jobs are created not only in India, but even in developed economies is created by tiny, small, medium enterprises. The roadside vendors, the Pani Puri Wala, you know, vegetable vendors, and mechanics. These, these are the kind who, who are the 80% of the jobs. So we have to focus on that. While, of course, not killing the golden goose like IBM or Infosys or Toyota. Right. Okay. Uh, last question, Captain. We've run out of time or running out of time. So, uh, I'll go back to the point. You know, so if you were, let's say, an active politician today, entrusted with the task of addressing joblessness in response to uh, an election uh, season that we've just, uh, uh, I mean, we've just sort of uh, seen go, th go past or rather we've just gone past. Uh, what would be your one or two key uh, uh, immediate responses and then medium to long term or one each? Uh, immediate response in all the sectors is to ensure that you do not create cartels of big businesses. We need private sector, but we need a vibrant private sector with multiple, multiple thousands of competitors whether it is in the higher level or in the middle level. You cannot have selective policies and selective uh, promotion of individual business houses. Regardless of uh, how close we are, regardless of how, 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 how everybody has helped, uh, you know, we should... I, I remember one minister, I can't name him, uh, he, he was... He took money, but he helped everybody, okay? <laughs> so, uh, th that one important thing is that to really go through all the rules and regulations and keeping, of course, safety and all those kind of uh, things in mind. Eliminate the labyrinthine of rules and regulations because that's what creates um, the, what you call the bribery first. So if you eliminate the entire ease of doing business by eliminating all the number of times you have to go to, anybody will tell you, it's not rocket science, the number of times you have to go and get get anything done because when you go he's not there you are told that he's in a meeting okay meeting so that's, to what? that's meeting the to that's him. the first part uh, uh, you know uh, which is 
more to do with corruption and removing corruption as a source of friction. So, and, it's a and valid point. Of doing business. Yeah, which the leads long to term is, hmm. the long term is complete. It may take another ten years, another fifteen years, completely get the government out out of the hand of interfering in the academics, either the leftists you know, influencing it, or there was, of course, I think, uh, cre credible criticism that the left you know, was uh, too powerful at one time in controlling the academia. Neither the left nor the right of any government should get interfering interference, uh, get into interfering with education. They must make it totally autonomous. Make all the Indian Institute of Management, Indian Institute of IIT, the higher education, and all the school board, make it completely independent of the government and the government bureaucracy, give them total freedom, put respect to people, and focus on education and education, education, especially the primary and the school education and good healthcare. I think this is also the repeatedly emphasized by Amatya Sen and Jean, Jean Dries that these two will eliminate create jobs and eliminate poverty, but that's in the long term. Right. Captain, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing your yeah. thoughts. And it was a pleasure Thank to you. speak to you again after a while. Thanks, Govind. Great pleasure.